What's up, Dark Judges, Desperados, and Dudes in Dick Shaped Helmets? It's Heavy Metal Kid from Cursed Earth Radio, and I'm here to show you how to play the Judge Dread board game from 1982. This was released by Games Workshop and designed by Ian Livingston. Artwork, of course, is by the amazing Brian Bolland and the incomparable Ian Gibson. Maybe you're interested in purchasing one of these for yourself, but the hundred plus dollar price tag for a used game has you a little bit scared. Maybe you have one of these down in your cellar somewhere that you have not yet to play and you're just too lazy to read the four page instruction booklet. Or maybe you just wanna see what it was like playing a Judge Dredd board game in a simpler time. And man, do I mean simple. So once your board is set out, you're gonna need your three decks of perp cards, crime cards, and sector cards. You want to make sure to keep these close to the board. And additionally, bring out your judge cards. Now judge cards have a uniform back that looks like this. On the other side, they have multicolored badges corresponding to the colors of the tokens in the game. For this game, I have the generic little pieces. Some of these came with cool little plastic judges. Decide on your number of players. In this case we're going to say three. So if you have three players you're going to want to bring out two judge cards at random and then you're going to want to take this turn start card that looks like this on the front and has an identical back to the judge cards. So for three players, you'll have one turn start card, two judge cards, you'll shuffle those around, and then you'll pass those out to each player. Now, when the players turn them over, two players will be immediately assigned a color of token, and the third player will get the turn start card. He can just go on in and choose a color that hasn't already been used. So let's go ahead and put those out on the board. All right, so there we have all three players set up on the board with their pieces. And now the player who has the turn start token is going to shuffle and give out six action cards to each player. So after that, the player with the turn start card gets to choose which sector of the six available sectors on the board that he is going to start in. And the instruction manual gives you specific guidelines as to which sectors are starting sectors. And essentially they're all laid out sort of around the edges and one in the center. So starting with the turn start player, he will choose where to start and then each player going in a circle to your left will choose where they start. All right, so it's a little tough to see but everybody is now on the board. We've got the yellow player starting at the Statue of Judgment. We have the blue player at the Academy of Law. And then we have the purple player all the way up top on the right at the Justice Department Armory. Now once everybody's out on the board, we're going to go about drawing our sectors, our crimes, and our perps. And again, the turn start player does this. He starts up here with these sector cards. He pulls one off the top, flips it over. So there we have Devil's Island. And that will tell him what sector the crime is taking place in. Then we have to figure out which perp is committing the crime. So we pull the perp off of the perp deck and we keep him face down. So it's a mystery who is committing the crime what we do know, though, is what crime they're committing. So in this case, the card that I pulled was murder, and that's a pretty high card. So we know that murder has been committed by some unknown perp at Devil's Island. And then you're just going to repeat that process five more times across the board. Okay, so you can see we have the crimes the sectors and the perps all determined. Before we go any further, I do want to take a step back and talk a little bit more about the action cards because we're going to be using those coming up here. Uh, action cards look like this on the opposite side. And they basically give you various uh, boons and perks. Uh, and a lot of times 
they will give you an either or sort of decision. So in the case of this Judge Hershey card, basically Hershey's with you and you can add three to your combat roll or you can take the other option, which is she can deal with any new orders from Barney. So a lot of cards have that either or option. One of my favorites here is the Auto Sumps Flab On card, which you can use on another judge to actually slow them down or you can use it to boost your own combat roll. Uh, and I feel like I really need to showcase the Judge Dread card because since Judge Dread is the most badass lawman in Mega City, whenever he shows up, the perp just gives up without any sort of incident, no combat rolls, nothing like that. Now that we've got all that figured out, we're going to go into the two phases of the game. And phases in this game are very simplistic. You have a movement phase and an arrest or a combat phase. The way the movement phase works is a player can move his piece to any adjacent spot and you can move two times on your turn. Now adjacency is determined by anything obviously touching your square. If it's something separated by water, then you have to have a bridge otherwise you're not able to travel there. So a good example here is the intensive care unit which is this little yellow space here and that's where you go whenever you are injured. Uh, if you're there you could not move across the river here you would only be able to move to an adjacent space and as a matter of fact when it comes to the intensive care unit you're only able to move from here to the hospital when you're there, but that's a special case because you're sent there after you're defeated in battle. So let's say that the yellow player on his turn wants to obviously move into this area where there's a crime being committed. It's within his two spaces away, so he's able to do that. And immediately when he enters that sector, which by the way, we have to point out that the crime being committed in that sector has uh, robot smashing, but it has our Good friend Walter. So if it were me, I would probably let Walter die. My co-host, Cool Johnny Cool, would uh, absolutely go in and save Walter. So there you go. And uh, we find out when we move there that the criminal in question is Rico Dread. So this number up here is his combat value. He's extremely tough. And additionally, the crime he's committing has a combat value as well. So you have eight plus four, which is gonna give us 12. So we'll just go ahead and show you what happens in terms of the combat phase since we're here. So currently Rico Dread plus this crime equal 12, but they also get a dice roll. So to figure out what the total strength of that crime is going to be, we take that 12, we roll the dice and we have 15. So for my judge to try and apprehend Rico Dread, I'm going to have to beat 15. Uh, and that's really tough. That's a really tough roll. Uh, what I have as a starting point for my judge is 5. And then I'll also get a dice roll. And then I'm able to sort of incorporate any of these cards that I have in my hand. So let's just say that I'm going to bring Judge Anderson in to assist my combat roll. Anderson provides a three. So I'm starting out here with eight, and now I'm going to roll my additional dice, which gives me 13, which means I do not defeat Rico Dread, and he continues his robot smashing attack, sending me to intensive care. So once we go through a full rotation, the turn start card will go to the player on our left and that player will replenish everyone's action cards back up to six and also replenish the crimes back up to six. So if someone has been arrested and that card is no longer on the board, we would then replenish the crime, the perp, and decide what sector it occurs in. A couple things to note with this game is that once six crimes have been solved, that's the end of the game, and we then count up the points of our crimes plus 
the perps that we brought in and whoever has the most points would then be considered the winner. Now if by some chance two judges end up on the same space where a crime is being committed, then both judges can attempt to apprehend the criminal. And that's pretty much the game in a nutshell. Uh, I'm sure there are a couple other tiny rules that I've neglected to mention here, but for the most part, those rules are mentioned on the cards themselves. A uh, good example is tip-off cards, where it allows a perp to move from one sector to another. Uh, you can do that if you're trying to keep someone away from, maybe you realize that Judge Rico's out there and you want to take him out so you can move him to keep him away from another judge so you can score those points. Uh, there are also med droid cards that allow you to come out of intensive care and go somewhere else on the board. So little things like that, but for the most part, everything you need to know to play this game is here in this video. It's incredibly simplistic. It's very lucky. Uh, that dice roll in combat changes things a lot. You can really beef yourself up for a fight and then roll a one while the perp rolls a six and that's pretty much the end of the uh, combat round for you. So as much as this game indicates on the back of the game box that it's more for experienced players, this would be no problem for someone to jump right into. I feel like you could teach this game in five minutes or less and uh, really have no trouble jumping right in and being just about as competent as any other player on the board. There's not a lot of strategy here. It's very light and uh, runs actually pretty quickly. Well, hopefully you've enjoyed this. Uh, let us know in the comments what you think. Keep your eye on this page for more dread related board gaming content. And please check out Cursed Earth Radio podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher probably, I have no idea. Type it into your Google search bar and I'm sure something will come up. All right. This is Heavy Metal Kid. Thanks a lot for checking out this video.